created an inaccurate stereotype of an engineer, a socially awkward white guy with a pocket protector and glasses. Well, I guess I do wear glasses, but as an engineer, here's what I think engineers do. We save the world, or at least make it better. Everything we design, build, or invent is to solve some problem. We love problems. One of my favorite problems to worry about is energy, because I'm worried about global warming and the future of the planet. And you know what uses a lot of energy? Data centers. Data centers generate a lot of heat. It's hard to cool them down. Here's the cooling system at a Google data center. The bike gives you a sense of scale. Why do they need so much cooling? Let's look at the carbon footprint of a cat meme. You find this adorable cat riding a unicorn and decide to send it to your mom. Your computer first represents the image as a series of electrical pulses. Those pulses go out of your house, usually to a box somewhere in your neighborhood, where the electrical pulses are converted to light pulses, because almost all of the internet is fiber optic. That EO, electrical to optical conversion, is done with a laser, which is maybe 15% efficient, meaning 15% of the electrical energy is converted to light, and the other 85% is converted to heat. Now, your neighbor is also sending cat memes that are also arriving at that same box and are also being converted to light, and their optical data packets are interleaved with your optical data packets. Those signals are sent to a bigger box somewhere and aggregated with some other signals. Eventually, the light signals arrive at a switching center where some of the packets need to go this way and some need to go that way. A computer has to figure out where they should go. But the computer does the switching and routing in the electrical domain. So the signals have to be converted to electricity again. The OE, optical to electrical conversion, is also not perfectly efficient, so more heat is generated. Once the computer determines where the packets need to go on the next leg of the journey, the signal for each path is converted back to light again, EO, more heat. Fun fact though, the various packets in your image might very well take different routes on the journey to mom's. Now, the efficiency of this process is kind of like if you were driving to mom's yourself, but every few blocks you have to get out of the car, change your clothes, go into a building, do some paperwork, change back and get back into your car. And, oh, by the way, all your body parts are traveling separately. Eventually, with all the cat memes and email and information being sent around, there's so much data that it takes more than one laser per fiber. And in fact, a single fiber might be transmitting light from a hundred different lasers. When those signals need to be switched, we have to first split the light out into a hundred separate optical signals, then convert them to a hundred electrical signals with a hundred different photo detectors. We just generated a hundred times as much heat. Once the signals are sorted out, we have to drive a hundred new lasers for the next leg of the journey. More heat. And that's for one fiber. But we have to do it for every fiber in the cable. This particular cable has 133 fibers, so we're talking 13,300 lasers, 13,300 photo detectors, at every stop. So the heat adds up kind of quickly. And in data centers, this optical to electronic to optical OEO conversion is happening over and over and over again as signals move from this server to that or pass through a firewall or what have you. At the Ohio State University data center, the light is converted to electricity and back four times just to get into the building. Heat. And that is why data centers use so much energy for cooling. So what engineers like me want to do is we want to figure out how can we switch all the data around from fiber to fiber without having to convert to electricity and back every single time. No 13,000 lasers, no 13,000 detectors, no heat. Light goes directly from one fiber cable to the other, somehow. Our solution at Buckeye Photonics, using technology developed at The Ohio State University, is to switch the light beams using tiny mirrors on a chip. Think of a disco ball, but flat and microscopic, and the mirrors can move. I have one here. So we take the light from one fiber optic cable, and we bounce it off the disco ball mirrors, and send each beam to the correct output fiber. This is actually not a new idea. 
20 years ago, engineers at Lucent came up with this solution. Below each fiber is a micromirror on a chip. These micromirrors can rotate to any angle within a certain cone. The micromirror is aimed with exquisite precision to carry the light off the mirror in the sky so that it comes back and hits another micromirror. That micromirror is then tilted again with exquisite precision to receive that light and aim it on the correct output fiber. When we saw this, we were blown away. In fact, this is the photocopy I made in the magazine at the time. What an amazing piece of engineering work, because they have to hit that output fiber exactly on center. The fiber core is only 10 microns across, one-tenth the thickness of a human hair. It looks so hard, honestly, I didn't think they could really do it. <laughs> but they did, and light went from each fiber to each other fiber with no conversion to electronics. But we wondered, is there an easier way? because this solution requires such precise control in these constant monitoring and adjustment for 256 mirrors. That's a lot of complicated electronics. Could we make something a little easier to control? One of my students at Ohio State, Dave Rabb, came up with a new solution. It uses tilting mirrors, but digital ones made by Sandia National Labs. Instead of having to tilt the micromirrors with exquisite precision, we just have to tilt our mirrors up or down, and close is good enough. We still need the precise aiming, but now it's done by fixed mirrors that are aligned once and left alone. We start with an array of fibers, like Lucent did, but we pass the individual light beams through the side of a disk lens. The lens causes the array of input spots to coincide in one spot of light on the other side. We put a fixed mirror there, which then sends the light back across the disk. When it comes back, the individual light beams resolve back into an array of spots. Now, we arrange those spots to land on our flat disco ball chip, again on the near side. And again, the micromirrors are much simpler than what was used before. Instead of pointing to any angle within a cone, ours are digital. Tip up, tip down, that's it. We tip some up, we tip some down, depending on where that particular beam has to go. Now, when the beams cross the disk again, they coincide again. But the ones that had hit a down-tipped micromirror all go to a lower mirror, and the ones that had hit an upturned micromirror coincide on an upper mirror. So now this system works kind of like the rearview mirror in your car. You tip it one way, the light hits your eyeballs directly. You tip it the other way, and you receive a modified image. In the car case, the image is dimmer. For us, these two mirrors are fixed, but they're aimed slightly differently. The lower mirror returns all the beams across the cell and reforms the original array of spots on another micromirror array. The upper mirror does the same thing, except it's tilted slightly so that any light beam that we send to the upper mirror returns, but it is modified. It is moved over one column. Rinse and repeat. On each bounce, each individual light beam can be sent to a new row or column until it eventually goes to the right output fiber. This looks complicated, but it's actually much easier to do, because now the exquisitely precise aiming is done by fixed mirrors. You align them once when you're building the thing, and in fact, my colleague Alan Yee at Ohio State carves them out of a single piece of metal so that only one thing has to be aligned, and it never moves again. The micromirrors, which do move, only move up or down, and they only have to get close to the right angle. As long as the beams don't miss the flat mirrors, we're good. Much simpler to build and to control. Now we can more easily keep everything optical to optical. No electrical conversion. No heat. No wasted energy for cooling. Another thing that happens in data centers is that sometimes the switching is actually done by a person who literally goes to the server room disconnects a fiber from here, walks over there, and connects it over there. With our device, we can send the beams from any input fiber to any output fiber, again without converting to electricity, and it can all be done remotely with the push of a button. No lasers, no detectors, no person walking from server to server. So we can simplify this to this, and hopefully go from this to this. And we can all continue to send emails and cat memes and videos without using so much energy to do it. And fulfill my engineer's dream of saving the world. Thank you.